In this video, we're going to extend Mega Man's damage animation by giving him a short period where he's going to keep flashing and retain his invincibility. So it gives him a chance to get away from enemies. So in case he's repeatedly hit, he doesn't die right away. And this is particularly important against enemies like Big Eye. And you see he dies right away. So as soon as Big Eye hits him, he's going to enter into his hit animation. And during that animation, keyboard control is disabled. And um, he's going to be invincible. But as soon as it's over, it's um, he's basically vulnerable again. But Big Eye is basically jumping. He's going to land on him. And you're, you're pretty much trapped. So this is our current um, hit animation. We have it sampled at 12. And every other frame, we um, toggle the sprite renderer, so that's what causes the flashing effect. Uh, so what we're going to do is over in our code, um, open up the player controller class, and then we're going to go down to the stop damage animation. So this function is actually called as an event in our hit animation, and what happens in here is we, um, we're not invincible anymore and we let the, we um, re-enable the keyboard input. So what we're going to do to achieve our flash and keep the um, invincibility going um, is we're going to use a coroutine. So we're going to define a coroutine. And we're going to call it flash after damage. And inside of our stop damage animation, we're going to call that coroutine. So our invincibility, we don't want it to happen as soon as this function is called. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that out and we're going to drop it in our coroutine. So we need to know how long we want the um, flash and no flash to happen, or the, basically how long we want the flash to happen for. And right now we have our animation sampled at 12. So we're going to create a delay, so we're going to create a float. And we're going to call it um, flash delay. And we're going to set it to 0 0.0833, which is basically about 1 12th of a second, which is like one frame of our, so one frame of our, our hit animation um, timeline. So, so we can keep it approximate. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop. And we're going to have our flash happen 10 times. So now we know we have this. So how do we do the flash? Well, there's a few ways we're going to try doing this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to try doing it with the sprite, um, toggling the sprite renderers enabled property. So let's do that. So sprite uh, enabled. So we're going to call it set it to false. We disable to turn it off. So that will make us go invisible. And then we're going to yield. We're going to use wait for seconds. And then we're going to use our flash delay. And let's just copy this and paste that. And then we're going to re enable our sprite renderer. So what's going to happen is it's going to first iteration, it's going to disable the sprite renderer and yield control back to the, um, to the update. And then it's going to wait for this amount of time and come back and then it'll pick up where it left off and then it should turn the sprite render back on, you know, go back, yield control, come back, and then just keep doing that for 10 times. And after those 10 times, then it's going to come down here to re-enable the um, or disable our invincibility so that we can be hit again. 
So let's save those changes. Come over here and try that. Well, we didn't flash, but we retained our invincibility. Well, part of the reason is, is that um, our animation is continuously playing, which I believe for enforces sprite render to always be enabled. So even if we do disable it here, it's just basically ignoring this. So that's not going to work for us. So that's the first fail. What's the next method? So the second method that we're going to try is actually toggling the material on the sprite. So let's try that. So material, no. And then down here, we're going to say sprite material is equal to a new material. And then we're going to use a shader. We're going to find our existing shader. So our sprite is using the Let's see if I can spell sprites. Our default shader. And so let's save that and try it. So what this is going to do is it's going to turn the material off, which should make us invisible, and then it's going to reapply the sprite's default material and to give us um, so that our, we're visible again. So let's do that and see what happens. Hey guy, boom. Okay, so I can get, now I have a chance to get away, and we're flashing. All right, so that worked. So that was the effect that we were looking to achieve. However, we're not gonna do this method. Um, I've come across in some of my other projects where this actually doesn't work. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but my sprite goes purple or magenta, which basically means that there's an error when it's trying to do something with a material. So if this works for you, great, but we're going to do the third option. So we're going to disable that. Third option is modifying the color. So we're going to change the color, which is a lot more, a lot less, um, I would say, problematic or volatile. So we're going to say new color. So the color is based off of RGBA, so red, green, blue, and alpha. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to be manipulating the alpha. Um, so when we put a zero, it's basically saying, okay, there's no alpha, which basically, yeah, you're invisible. And then we're going to basically reapply that. So we're going to put the alpha back at one, so we're completely solid again. And let's try that. Of enemies I didn't get hit, and I'm flashing. Okay, so we were able to flash and retain our invincibility. So, what we're going to do though, this is good, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the um, colors um, static properties instead of defining a new color each time. So this is exactly the same thing, but we're just going to use static property. So there's a static property in the color class called clear, which basically is um, transparent. And down here, we're going to use white. It's not going to make your sprite white, but it basically makes your sprite its regular color. So. And you can find all these over on the Unity documentation site for color. So you can see that clear is basically all zeros for RGBA, and white is all ones for RGBA. So solid and tr completely transparent. So now we're going to go back over here, run it again. flashing or invincible. There we go. 
And so that's how we extend our damage animations and Mega Man can get away from enemies without any problems. So the code for this is over um, in the description. You can get it off GitHub. If you've um, been following along, you can add this to the existing project from project 10. Um, otherwise, this is this code basically can be used in any project. It's not dependent on this um, Mega Man game that we're building. Okay, so if you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, um, have a good day. Thanks, bye.